we are live and I can see that the first students are joining us and I'd like to welcome everyone. So welcome and welcome to this uh, live webinar. So today we're going to talk about Northwest College and connected with us, I have the pleasure to introduce you to Sarab is the uh, International Recruitment and Student Support Manager at the Northwest International College and will be here to tell us more about the Northwest College. Of course, there will be time dedicated for all of your questions, so any sort of question that you might have, feel free to drop them into the Q&A box and we will be able to answer at the end of the presentation. But just before we start, as I can see that more people are joining, so just want the time for, for students to join the session and we'll be able to enjoy fully from the start. Since we're not able to see all of your faces, just drop us a message and let us know where you guys are connecting from. You can use either the chat or the Q&A box. Just let us know where you are connecting from. So just we have a feeling of the audience we have connected with us today. So just let us know. And then of course, any sort of questions that you might have, you'd be able to use the chat or the Q&A box uh, to ask all the questions. So just leave us a message where you are connecting from. Um, we should have like an international audience connected with us today. So we are assuming that you're connected from different cities, different parts of the world. Just drop us a message and we will be able to start uh, in a minute with our presentation. Perfect. So we have Martina from Italy. Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us. All the questions, of course, uh, be able to uh, answer them at the end of the presentation. Uh, Sarah also has uh, collected some videos, some testimonials from students. So you also be able to have an idea of what it's like to study at Northwest, Northwest College from the world uh, of students like yourself. Poesias from Asuncion, Paraguay. Hello, hi, and welcome. Hi, Georgia. Nice to see that more people are connecting. So believe more people will join us uh, during the event. We are just ready to start. So for whoever just joined, welcome. This is Federica, I'm part of the DocCity team. And it's my pleasure to welcoming you all to this live webinar. Today we are connected with Northwest College and to be able to tell you more about study, work and settle in Alberta's capital city, Edmonton, and we're going to talk about Northwest College. It'll be a dedicated time for all of your questions. Please use the Q&A box and we'll be able to answer at the end of the presentation. Sarab, I leave you the floor and we are looking forward to receiving all of your questions. Thank you, Frederick, uh, for that uh, welcome note and thank you for inviting me here. So hello, uh, hello everyone. I guess you're probably joining from different part of the world. So probably it's good morning for you, for us here in Edmonton, because I'm joining from Edmonton, Alberta. It's a lovely morning here, very good weather. So I hope wherever you're joining, you're healthy, and the weather is nice, you're enjoying it. Uh, so again, welcome, welcome again. So what I'm going to do quickly before we um, start our presentation, I'm going to play some quick videos. I have three videos. So hopefully you like it. So one is about uh, the Northwest College. It's a message from our president who is welcoming all the students. And then there is a video about our students talking about their experience. And then we also have a third video about the city of Edmonton, because that's the city where we are located. So that video will give you the idea, the environment, the vibe in the city. Okay, so let's get started on those three videos. I hope you like all those three. And let me just quickly play that. Okay, just give me one minute. I'm going to share my screen and then you'll be able to hear these videos. Okay, so we'll start with the first one, which is a place of belonging, Northwest College. And this is a message from our president. No matter where you are, you will always have a place at Norquest College. 
Norquest College is a vibrant, inclusive, and diverse learning environment that transforms lives and strengthens communities. We are dedicated to making sure you can continue to get the workforce-ready education you expect. We are here to support you wherever and however you may be learning. Norquest instructors, faculty and staff all share a commitment to making sure your success is at the core of everything we do. At Norquest, you'll acquire career-ready training in an environment that is truly welcoming, accommodating, supportive, and inclusive. Norquest is your community college, a place of inclusion and a place of impact. Let me be the first to say, welcome to Norquest. Okay, so hopefully you like that video. So that was the first video. Okay, we'll play the next video, which is again, you'll hear from our students about their experience at studying at Northwest. So this is the second video. Hopefully you enjoy this video as well. So let's play this video. My name is Ranford Plummer and I'm from Jamaica. My name is Rashan Jodh and I'm from India. So my name is Harmandeep Kaur and I'm from Punjab, India. My name is Rubai Padam and I am from a city called City Beautiful. It is from the north of India, which is as beautiful as in Winton. My name is Sharon and I'm from Kenya. It's a country in East Africa. My name is Aldrich Luis Biantinor. I'm from the Philippines. I chose Northwest College um, because it was very friendly to me. From the International Student Office was amazing. They answered all my questions, they satisfied all my concerns. They look out for our best interests. They give us all the supports we need. The technology here is amazing. And I think that Northwest gives you that holistic learning experience. You can gain real world experience and uh, the teachers are so supportive. You can feel comfortable here. There are like 77 uh, languages spoken on campus. At first I thought it would be so intimidating. Students are like from all of us, from different ages. The diversity in the school, it's so interesting. The life in Canada is really, really amazing, especially for women. This is a beautiful city to be in. Here in Edmonton, we're so hospitable to me, very caring. I would describe Edmonton as a very beautiful place. People here are really, really respectful. They respect you for what you are. The advice I would give to prospective students is don't be afraid. Don't doubt yourself. Don't limit your expectations. There are many places that you can go. There's a lot that you can achieve here at Northwest College. There are great opportunities in Canada, especially for international students. When you come down here, you'll actually learn a lot about yourself. If you're making a personal investment, you have so much support, you learn to grow. The thing that I really like about my program is that I could be an advocate for this. It really brings me joy that in the long run, as of today, I could use the knowledge that I gained in my program, help the people around me. Once you come here, only then you realize how much good it can be to your life and how much it can add to your experience. Most people think that coming to a different country, coming to a different college is hard, but just take the fast day. Okay, so that is the second video. So you you heard it from our uh, students. So the last video I'm going to play, I hope you're liking all these videos. Um, so the last video I'm going to play is uh, of the city of Edmonton. So this will give you an idea about how the city of Edmonton is, the vibe of the Edmonton city. So let's pause this last video. This is a city of grit and love, a work hard, play hard kind of place. We get up early, man, it can be so dark, but that's what we gotta do, to compete. If you're born with a silver spoon or want to sit on the beach all day, this probably isn't your kind of place. People here work hard, study hard, work out hard, hurry hard, cheer hard. I moved here in 2017. 1999. 1984. 1978. 1945. 1927. People come here because of opportunity. To start their lives. To restart their lives. To own a house. 
my little piece of paradise, to start a business, to start a family. But we all stay here because we are part of building something, a community, a city, not New York or Toronto or Calgary, definitely not Calgary. We're building a city that is weaved together with different colors and shapes and sizes, like a medley, a soup, yeah, like turkey soup. We're the festival city, river city, Alberta's capital city, gateway to the north, a college town, a government town, a sports town, volunteer town, Condiments. city of champions, definitely champions. Always champions. I wouldn't live anywhere else. So hopefully you like that video as well. So again, thank you um, for watching all these videos. These are all great videos um, about the city. And so we'll start now with our presentation, I'm going to start sharing my screen and we'll get into the programs we offer and all that great information. So let me just share my screen. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, so now you have a little bit idea about Edmonton, about Northwest, because you watched those few videos, so you're a little bit more familiar. Um, so uh, the Northwest College is one of the colleges. So we are a college which is located in the city of Edmonton, which is the capital city of the province of Alberta. So that's where we're located. So in Canada, there are two kind of post-secondary institutions. There are colleges and there are universities. So sometimes students get confused. Okay, what's the difference between a college and a university? There is a lot of difference. So the difference is that colleges mostly offer programs where students come and they study and they are looking for job opportunities. So our programs, college programs, are more job-ready programs. So in Canadian education, a lot of students go to colleges, they also go to university, but the main reason they come to colleges is because those students are saying, okay, well, I only want to study for one or two years maximum. I do not want to spend that much money in my education. I don't have that much money, but I want to get a job. So my main objective is to get a job really quickly. So that is the main focus of the students who are coming to us. And that's the way we structure our programs that our programs are more job ready rather than just theoretical knowledge. Because if you go to a university, their main focus on academic knowledge, research, literature review. So they are more focused on that side. And of course they offer degrees and all that, but they sometimes do not focus that much on skill development that leads to job. Because not only having an academic knowledge gives you a job, what gives you a job is the experience, the skills that you have. And that's what as a college we focus on. Okay? I just want to give you that background so you have a little bit better understanding that what is the difference between a college and a university in Canada? Because that could be confusing for you, because in a lot of the countries there is no college or university to focus on. Now, we are located in Edmonton, so you already saw the video, you have a little bit idea. So this is the picture, beautiful picture of downtown Edmonton city. And our campus is located in the downtown of Edmonton city. Um, and that's where we are located. Uh, we have our main campus here and it's a main urban campus within the central of the city. So in North America, in Canada especially, um, you know, a lot of the downtowns are in the central of the city. So if your campus is in the downtown, it's very centrally located. So it doesn't matter where you live within the city. It's very easy for you to commute from any part of the city to the downtown. So that's the beauty, um, you know, the way the downtown campus is. So that's why we have a campus in downtown is centrally located. And that's where also most of the businesses are. Now, a little bit about more Edmonton city. I'm just comparing here Edmonton with some other major cities in Canada. So Edmonton is a big city. Uh, there are only six big cities in Canada, which have more than 1 million population. So Edmonton has roughly around 1.5 million population. So it's a very big city from a Canadian standard. And something that stands out for Edmonton, it's a very affordable city. It's the most affordable big city in Canada. 
So the cost of living here in Edmonton is the least as compared to some other cities of Canada. So again, maybe a lot of you may know about Toronto or Vancouver. Um, so I'm comparing here the cost of living with them. So the cost of living in Edmonton is 50% less than what it's going to cost you in Toronto and Vancouver. So that's something that is very attractive to a lot of people because they are looking for a destination which is a big city, a lot of job opportunities, but they're looking for a place which is also affordable, not as expensive as big, big cities. So Edmonton in that perspective is a very good destination for students to come because the cost of living is very less. Just to give you an idea, if you're looking for a one bedroom apartment in the downtown of Edmonton city, it's going to cost you anywhere from eight to nine hundred dollars. If you are looking for a similar apartment in Toronto or Vancouver, it's going to maybe cost you two thousand to twenty five hundred dollars. So pretty much the cost of living in Edmonton is fifty percent less. So I'm a little overemphasizing on it because that is a big distinction, um, and you can save a lot of money when you come to Edmonton because the cost of living is less. Now, on top of the less cost of living, taxes are also less. There's only 5% tax in Alberta as compared to some other provinces where you can see here 13 or 12% tax. So again, less taxes mean everything you're buying is going to cost you less. You're buying a phone, you're buying a car, you're buying a grocery, you're buying anything, it's going to cost you less in Alberta. So Alberta is considered the most affordable province in Canada. So it's the least expensive province in Canada. So if you're looking for a place where you spend the least amount of money um, and it's very, very cost effective, then Alberta and Edmonton is a great destination. Now, the other uh, benefit of coming and studying in Edmonton and Alberta and overall for Canada also is Canada is a very welcoming country. Like myself, I, am, I was not born in Canada. I was born in India. I came to Canada as an immigrant and now I'm a Canadian citizen. So Canada accepts you. It doesn't matter where you are from, whether you're from Africa, whether you're from Latin America, Middle East, India, China, whatever country you come from, Canada is a very, very open country. It, it uh, embraces me with you, um, you know, open arms. And immigration is one of the big things, um, you know, that drives people from a lot of part of the world to come to Canada. So in terms of the immigration programs we have here in Canada, I think it's it's very hard to compete. I don't think any English speaking country, whether that's Australia, whether that's New Zealand, US or UK, nobody come close to Canada because Canada has a very attractive immigration program. So if you say, okay, I'm spending that much money, what is my return on investment? So a lot of people saying, okay, I'm going to spend maybe 30,000, 40,000 trillion dollars, what I get in turn. So of course, once you study with us here, you get, if you do a two-year program, what you get in return, you get a three-year work permit. So you will be able to stay in the country, work for three years. So whatever you spend in your education, 40 to $50,000, you're going to earn back that money. That's first. Second thing, Canada and Alberta offers you the opportunity to stay back. You can permanently settle in Canada. That's also the other return on investment. So you have two great return on investment because Canada has a very good uh, life here, very safe country, uh, the standard of living is here great, so it gives you that proposition. So Alberta, again, because in Canada, every province have their own immigration program, so Alberta has an easier immigration program, so that's another big advantage of studying in Edmonton. Now, employment-wise, Alberta is a big economy, so Alberta is called the energy province of Canada, so Alberta has so 90% of oil of Canada is in Alberta. So we are the oil and gas province of Canada. So as you know, any part of the world which have oil and gas, that's considered a rich area. So same with us, Alberta has a lot of oil and gas reserves. We even have potash, uranium, those kind of natural resources. So because it's a very, it has a lot of abundance of natural resources, Alberta is considered one of the richest province in Canada also. And that's the reason why we have less taxes because the province is very rich. So it's saying, okay, we'll charge less taxes. We don't need to charge that high taxes because we are inherently rich in resources. We're getting a lot of money from other revenue streams. So that's why the taxes are lower. 
And we have a lot of jobs here in healthcare. We have a lot of jobs in service sector, in retail, wholesale, oil and gas, educational services, social work, agriculture, and even in IT, information technology. So there are a lot of jobs in different, different sectors. So it's a very diverse economy here. And also income wise, uh, you know, every province in Canada have a minimum wage. So Alberta has the second highest minimum wage in Canada, which means if you do any kind of work here in Alberta or in Canada, you will get $15 an hour salary. Um, and um, here in Alberta, we have the tax brackets, like the income tax brackets. They are more lenient. So because of that, people give less taxes. So their income after taxes is higher as compared to other places. So that's again a great benefit. So if I have to summarize, what are the benefits of studying in Edmonton? The summary is like Alberta and Edmonton is a place where you will make more money as compared to other provinces in Canada. It's a place where you will spend less money because the cost of living is less, the taxes are less. Uh, it's a place where there are a lot of employment opportunities because Alberta is the third largest economy in Canada. It also has the highest GDP growth rate which means in simple language, high GDP growth rate means there is a lot of new jobs coming up in this economy. So the economy is growing at a very fast pace. And also it has immigration programs. So if you're looking for a maximum return on your investment, yeah, you, you study, you get a work permit, you work, and then you can even settle down here. So that is your long-term return on investment that you get here in Edmonton, Alberta, and overall in Canada as well, okay? So I hope this gives you a little bit understanding like why studying in Edmonton, Alberta or Canada is very, very attractive for international students. Okay, a little bit more about Northwest College. So you can see here on the right hand side, the map of Canada. So Canada is a very big country. It's the second largest country in the world after Russia. So Canada is bigger than Canada, the US. So we have more land than United States. We have more land than any other country only country which is bigger than Canada is Russia. So it's a big, big country. And we are uh, located here in the province of Alberta, which is one of the Western provinces. And here is Edmonton, as you can see here in pretty much in the middle of Alberta. So that's exactly where we are located. So we are one of the Western province in Canada. Now, Northwest College is one of the publicly funded community college. So what is publicly funded college means? So it's a government college. So we are owned by the government of Alberta. So there are a lot of government colleges and they are private colleges. So we are not a private college. We are a government college. So again, in Canadian education system, public colleges are considered better than private colleges. Uh, that's the way it works in uh, Canada. I know in US, it's very different. US also have great private and public institution, whereas in Canada, uh, most of the Canadians go to the public institution because they have a better reputation and the quality of education is better in the public institution. So we are a public institution um, and we have a long history. So Northwest College opens its door in 1965. So we have a history of around 56 years. So we are open since 56 years. So we have a long history. And we have roughly around 21,000 students who are studying with us. This includes our full-time, part-time, continuing studying students. So we have all different kinds of students who are studying with us. And uh, the, I think something unique about Northwest is we are very diverse. So you can see here we have students from more than 100 countries studying in our campus. We have 78 languages spoken on campus, so that's a lot of languages. So probably a lot of languages that you may speak um, are spoken here. We have a lot of people who speak languages like Spanish, Portuguese. Uh, we have people who speak maybe very, very different African languages. We have a lot of African immigrants in the Edmonton city because Edmonton is a very multicultural city. 35% population of the Edmonton city is immigrants, people who have come outside of Canada and made uh, Canada or Edmonton their home. We have very huge um, you know, immigrant population from Asia. We have a huge immigrant population from Africa. We also have a lot of uh, immigrant population from Latin America. Uh, we also have a lot of people from Eastern Europe also. Um, and again, we have a lot of people who are from different, different parts of the world. So, you know, there's huge, huge populations like 
We have a lot of Colombians here uh, from Latin America. That's a very big community here. Uh, we also have a lot of people from Kenya, from Nigeria, uh, from Congo, and these are some other countries in Africa. In Eastern Europe, we have a very huge community from Ukraine, and I, you know, probably what's happening in Ukraine. So Canada is inviting more than 100,000 Ukrainian refugees to come to Canada, and most of them are coming to Edmonton because there's such a huge community here. So it's a very diverse community, what I'm trying to tell you. So you, if you come from that continent, if you come from an African continent, you come from South America, and you say, okay, Will there be anyone who speaks Spanish? Will there be someone from Africa, from my culture, my community? No. We have people from all different communities, religions, backgrounds. So you'll not be the only one in the city. It's a very, very diverse community. And that's the beauty of Canada. It's not only just about Edmonton. Any big city in Canada has very, very diverse communities. And we have people from all over the world. So that's a great thing about Canada. And also, last thing I'll mention here, that 57% of our students are born outside of Canada. Again, these are Canadian students. So what, who are these? So these are our new immigrants. So a lot of new immigrants who are permanent resident Canadian citizens are coming to our colleges because they have education, foreign education, and they are coming here because they have to upskill, reskill their education so they can get employment afterwards, okay? So that's a little bit information about Edmonton and our college. Now, what is unique about Northwest College? So there are a few things I will emphasize here. Um, so one thing that a college education really focuses on, that we only offer those programs where students can find job in the local economy. So in simple language, we match our programs with what and in the local economy. So our programs are very well aligned with the local labor market. Because as I mentioned before, those students are coming to colleges and a lot of students who have done university. So we have a lot of students, Canadian students who have done a university degree and they cannot find a job. So, okay, I've done a degree, I cannot find a job. Now what? Go to a college, go to a college, do a college program for one or two years and then you will find a job because we offer job ready programs. So if you're interested to do a job ready program, which not only give you education, but give you some practical experience because we have work integrated learning, which means we have practicums in each and every program. So you're not only just getting education, you also are getting practical training. We place you into the uh, companies and organizations while you're in the program. So you're getting some job ready training and you're also connecting with the employers and you can show to the employers when you graduate, you do not have just a degree to show, you say, okay, I have an education, but on top of that, the most important thing is I have some Canadian experience. I worked in a company while I was going to school. I have this two months, three months practical experience. So the employers will take you seriously. They'll say, oh, well, this person is kind of trained. So if I hire this person, I do not have to train them that much. So that is what you know college education does. It gives you education, but it also gives you skills to find employment. And also at our college, we have a very heavy focus on career readiness. So we have a career education center. So they provide a lot of different uh, services. They provide you one-on-one -on -one career coaching. Uh, we also organize career fairs. We have job portals where you can go and apply for jobs. So there is a lot of support available from a career and employment services point of view. Again, we do not find a job for you, but we will guide you how you can find a job here in Canada. Okay, so there is a lot of that for us. And the last thing I'll mention here is that the employment rate of our student is very high. So 95% of our students are able to find job within six months of graduation. Okay. So this is a little bit about what is unique about the Northwest. Now, again, our applied learning is in different, different forms. So we have some programs where there is clinical placements. So our health programs have clinical placements. Then we have community study programs where we have field and work placements. We also have community service learning, uh, which is also kind of a work placement. So these are all work placements that we will find. And as a college, we will help you to find that. But these are unpaid. So clinical placement, field placement, community service learning, they are unpaid, but they are mandatory. So you have to do it. Otherwise, you cannot graduate from the program. Now, in the co-op, uh, we do have 
unpaid and paid co-op. Some of our programs have paid co-op and some programs have unpaid co-op. So when we have paid co-op, it's usually between three to four months. And in that three to four months paid co-op, you'll go and work in a company, you'll get a salary of 15 to $18, uh, which means you can earn anywhere from seven, um, six to $7,000 while you're in that room. So that's a pretty significant money that you'll make through this paid internship. So we have all these different kind of applied learning in our program, and which is very, very helpful from an employment point of view, because we always say that your uh, practicums or your work integrated learning or applied learning is a launch pad for your career in the future, okay? Okay, I'll move next. Hopefully this slides uh, give you some idea about what applied learning is. Now, what kind of programs we offer, you must be wondering. We offer health programs, community study program, environmental study program, some technology programs and business program. So we, and we also have foundation program for someone who, who think that their English is not up there and they need some more English language training before they can do our programs. Yes, we do also have English language training program, but some students who think, well, English is my first language, I don't need it, then in that case, of course, you can directly go to the program and you can continue. So what kind of programs we have? I'm going to give you a very quick overview of it. So we'll start with health programs first. So we have here different kind of credentials. So we have here two-year diploma. So you can see here, this is two-year diploma program. Then we have one-year certificate and we have one-year post-diploma certificate. So the maximum length of our program is between one to two years. And that's good because students like it because they say, okay, I don't want to be in the school for four years or five years, that's a long education. And again, Canadian education could be expensive as compared to your home education. So student wants to study for one to two years. So that is you know, expensive enough. It's okay, well, I have only funds to study for two years. After that, I'm looking for work permit, I'm looking for permanent residency and all that. So this program leads to all those kind of things. Now in these programs in health, we have very popular programs. So we have Canada's largest practical nursing program. Anybody wants to become a nurse? Yeah, we have a great program. Anybody wants to become a healthcare aide? There is a lot of job opportunities here in Alberta. Yes, we have a program. It's a one-year program. Uh, we also have a healthcare leadership program. This is a post-diploma. So the difference between this certificate, post-diploma, and diploma is that in post-diploma, only students with degree and diploma can apply, whereas in certificate and diploma program, high school students can apply, and even also sometimes bachelor students do apply as well in our diploma certificate programs. Then we have a program in pharmacy technician, we have program in uh, interdisciplinary therapy assistant. Uh, this is focused on physiotherapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, those kind of things. We have recreation therapy program. And then we have a new program. This is going to open up in June. This is called Practical Nursing for Internationally Educated Nurses. This is mainly for those students who are already a nurse in their country and they want to come to Canada to work as a nurse. So right now in health, uh, health is one of a very oversubscribed field because, you know, in Canada, health is a very highly paid job. There are so many job opportunities in the health sector. So that's why you can see pretty much all our programs are full right now for September. So the best now time to apply for our program is winter 2023. You can apply. We have seats available in nursing, healthcare aid, healthcare leadership. And in healthcare leadership, only students who have a degree or diploma in health can apply. So if you are like, for example, a doctor, a dentist, something like that, yeah, you can definitely apply for a healthcare leadership program. And all of our programs here accept the healthcare leadership. All programs here have clinical placements, but they are unpaid, but students get that practical training. And again, we are working with one of the best employer for our practicum with Alberta Health Services. So students go out in a hospital or something like that facility, they do that practicum, they get that experience and they also study at the same time. So you're getting both things. You're getting the education, you're getting the practical training. So that is the balance of the education, which a college education offers, which is different than a university education. Again. Okay. And then, of course, the tuition fee that you're seeing here on the right hand side, this is for the full duration of the program. And this includes health insurance, dental insurance, bus pass. 
So all those kind of things are included in this, uh, you know, creation fee. Okay. So I'll move to the next slide. So we have community study programs here. We have again, um, you know, two-year diploma programs, um, and then we have one-year post-diploma. We have one-year certificate programs. So here also we have very popular programs like early learning and child care, child and youth care. These are very high employment uh, programs. And that's why you see these programs are already full. So any program which is very oversubscribed, of course, those programs have very high employment outcome. Uh, so a lot of students, when they are in the program, they're able to find employment. So uh, if you want to apply for early learning, child care, child and youth care, these programs are open right now for winter 2023. We have a mental health recovery post diploma. So if you are a student who has a degree or diploma in health science, degree or diploma in psychology, sociology, this is a very good program. And we have right now seats available in winter intake uh, for mental health recovery program. For addiction recovery practitioner, um, you know, this program is already waitlist, but this is another kind of a similar program to this one. And then we have these certificate programs on the top. If you have early learning child care certificate, these are mostly one plus one. You do one year program and you jump directly to the second year here. We have community support worker. There's a lot of jobs here in Alberta for community support worker uh, because Edmonton is a sanctuary city. But so what is sanctuary city? So sanctuary city is like many illegal uh, you know, people who do not have a status in Canada, they come to Edmonton and they hear the city of Edmonton gives them a lot of protection, a lot of help and all that. So there's a lot of community support work, um, you know, that is provided by the city. So that's why there's a lot of jobs in community support worker. And you do this one year, you can then directly jump into the second year of the settlement studies. So in two years, you can do a one year certificate here. And you can also get a diploma in settlement studies as well. And then we have educational assistant. Anyone who wants to become a teacher in elementary schools and work under a teacher as a you know, teacher assistant or educational assistant, then this is a great program. And then we also have uh, you know, uh, right now availability in the winter intake for this community support worker program. Uh, we also have these programs here, disability studies diploma, social work diploma, justice diploma, settlement studies diploma. Uh, and we have limited status right now in justice. So if anyone wants to study law, criminal law of Canada, um, they can definitely apply for the justice diploma program. Um, and we have a lot of lawyers who also apply for this program as well. And then we have settlement studies diploma. This is a two-year diploma program. And this is mainly for those students who want to work in settlement agencies, helping newcomers, new immigrants to settle in Canada. So we have this uh, you know, program open right now for inventory take. Now, the good thing about all these programs here is that we have work placement, field placements, pretty much in all the programs. And same thing here, we have field placement, work placement, but they're unpaid. Uh, but the quality of practicum is great and we will help students in that work placement as well. Now we have here more programs. We have business program here and uh, we have four specialization in it. We have uh, accounting, finance management, human resource management. And the good thing about this program business uh, is that we have paid internship options, So, but it's competitive, it's not guaranteed. So you have to compete with other students and uh, you have to maintain certain GPA. And if you're able to do that, then yes, you could get a four months of paid internship and uh, you will be earning between six to eight thousand dollars in that four months. Um, so that's great. You're getting education, you're getting some experience and you're making some money also through the paid internship. So right now, business program is open in winter because it's also a very oversubscribed program. So it's already full for September. Here also, we have these two business program, accounting and administrative professional um, and then, of course, this is more focused on accounting. This is more focused on office operation work. These are one-year programs. We even have one month of unpaid practicums in these programs. Um, so right now, you can see we you can do, you can definitely apply for accounting technician for fall. Uh, but again, this program is only open for free. Okay. So I'll come here. So we have here technology programs. So as I mentioned before, you know we have oil and gas industry here. 
in Alberta. It's a big industry. So that's why we have environmental science jobs here, a lot of them. So the first program you see here is environmental protection technology. So this program is for those students who want to acquire some environmental science technician skills. There is a field school in this program, which means field school means you're going into the field and you are working as a technician in the field on the ground. And we will take you there um, and then you will be experiencing as you're working as an environmental protection technologist. So you get hands on experience. Also in this program, we also have four months of paid internship. Again, it's not guaranteed. It's competitive in nature. You're competing with other students, but you could get a four month paid internship also in environmental protection technology. And once you graduate, you will become environmental protection technologist. And there are jobs here in Alberta related to that. Um, we have a lot of students who are coming from overseas, not only high school students, but majority of our students coming in environmental protection technology are those students who have done a bachelor's of science, or bachelors of engineering in civil engineering, those kind of background students are coming in this program. It's a very suitable program, even for a bachelor of science degree students or bachelors of civil engineering students. And we have seats available right now for September intake, so you can definitely get admission at this one. Now, energy management is a very different program. It's a very unique program. You're not finding many institutions. So once you do this program, you will become an or you will work as energy manager, energy auditor, energy project manager, energy consultant in oil and gas companies, or even in electrical utility companies. So this program also has a four months paid internship, but it's not guaranteed. Uh, you have to do a competitive paid internship. And this program is also open right now for September. So you can apply for September if you're interested in this. And then we have machine learning analysts. So this is mainly for students who are interested in computer science. So we um, teach here artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science, and also the computer programming. So that is the main feature here. And now this program is waitlisted because again, uh, you know, this got waitlisted very soon. Uh, but this program also have applied learning. There are projects students are making in the third and fourth semester. So there is an applied learning in this program, machine learning analysis program. Okay, uh, now I'll go to this. So these are professional certificates. So these are non-credit programs. So they're a little different than the other programs. So the difference between the credit and the non-credit program is that in these credit programs, if you, for example, do a machine learning diploma, you can move a lot of your courses to a degree and you can then do a degree afterwards if you want to. Whereas in this professional certificate program, you cannot move your courses from one course to another. Now, the benefit of this professional certificate program is if you do this program, you can um, you know, get a designation. So this is this program, professional certificates are mainly for mature learners, for students who have already a degree and diploma in their home country and they want to get designations. So for example, you do a business analysis program, uh, you graduate, you write an exam and you become a business analyst. You do a supply chain management program, you write an exam and you become supply chain management professional. Same with food and beverage, you, you know, graduate and you get a designation. So this is a new program, right now we are creating a designation. So I'll share maybe later on with you. Uh, but this is still work in process. We are working on that. And also the very good thing about this, all these three programs is that there is guaranteed three months of paid internship. So every student who's going in this program, they will get three months of guaranteed paid internship. So you will earn for sure between six to seven thousand dollars. So that's a great thing. If any program offers you a uh, guaranteed three months paid internship. So this program, all these three programs, supply chain, business analysis, food and beverage, they are all open right now for September intake. And this is the tuition fee that you can see here for this one year programs as well. Now, a lot of time when students do one year program with us, they definitely do another one year. And the reason why, because in Canada, if you do either a two year program or you do a two one year programs, you can get a three-year work permit. So a lot of students want to get that three-year work permit because that way you can earn more money to whatever you spend in Canada. And also if you want to settle in Canada permanently, you have a higher chance of settling because if you have a two years of education.
Okay. So moving forward, we have this another program called Teaching English. So this is mainly for those students who want to become a teacher. So if you're already a teacher and you love teaching, then you say, I want to become an English teacher in Canada, then this is a great program. And this program is right now waitlisted, but this is available in fall again, mostly, and it's a post baccalaureate. So you must have a bachelor's degree to apply for this program. And then we have these programs like ESL. So if you're a student who say, well, my English is not up to the mark, I need to improve my English, then you can do an ESL program. Some students who do not meet our academic requirement, they're not meeting our English, maths, biology requirement. They can do academic upgrading courses. We also have Northwest Bridging Program. That is also a great program. And this is mainly for those who, you know, who want to do our foundation courses of ESL or those that, um, you know, just to get into the program. So the way it works is that, you know, you do your bridging portion and then you get into the target program. So a lot of students do it for our nursing program, for our energy management business program, because they don't meet our admission requirement. They say, well, my English is not up to the mark. I have to do some ESL courses. And for some, English is not an issue. It's that they didn't meet the admission requirement. They didn't study biology. They didn't study maths. So they have to do those foundation courses in the bridging program, and then they will enter into our nursing uh, business or all other program. But the good thing about this program is we give you combined offer level. And even if you're doing mass, English, or ESL courses, you have a guaranteed seat in the target program. So you have a seat waiting for you in your program. So you have that peace of mind that, oh yeah, well, there is a seat available, so I, uh, you know, I have some certainty about uh, getting into that program after completing my foundation. Now, this is our uh, requirement. Um, so again, I'll mention later on, there are certain countries where English is the first language. Uh, you do not need to provide IELTS and TOEFL. For those countries, IELTS and TOEFL are paid. But for other countries, like a lot of countries in Asia, uh, Latin American countries, uh, you know, you have to provide these codes. So we do accept IELTS, we do accept Duolingo, we accept TOEFL, so we accept all these different kind of tests. So if you want to get into a business program, you need IELTS score of six with no penalty less than 5.5, TOEFL of 71, Duolingo 105. But if you're not able to get that score and you have a score of Duolingo 75 or IELTS score of 4.5 with no section below four. In that case, you can then still get into the program through bridging program. But yes, you have to do some ESL courses first, and then you will get into the program. But if you are from a country where your English is your first, uh, like for example, Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, they, they student from these countries, they do not have to provide any, any IELTS score because they are English accepted. Now, for other programs, most of our health programs, community study program, environmental science, machine learning, teaching English, those kind of program, we need an IELTS score of 6.5 with no pen less than six. We need a TOEFL score of 84, daily 115. But here also, if you don't meet that admission department, but at least you got daily 85 or this much IELTS, you can still get into the program through bridging program. But of course, you have to do some ESL courses. Same thing here for nursing. So a lot of students do our bridging program for nursing program because we have a very high IELTS requirement and a TOEFL requirement. So a lot of students are not able to meet that. Then with the Duolingo 95 or with this much IELTS score, um, they are able to get into the bridging program. They do some ESL courses and then they jump into our nursing program. Moving forward uh, from the admission, so our admission is non-competitive. It's first come first, uh, you know, first admitted. So whoever applies first, get qualified first, get admitted. First. So that's the way our admission works. So applying early is very, very important uh, for our program. So whoever applies early has a higher chance of getting an offer. And who applies late has a lesser chance of getting an offer. So that's why applying early is very important. And then, you know, probably, that our programs have English language requirement. I already shared you IELTS and TOEFL. And then we have academic requirements for our program. So for example, for our certificate and diploma programs, we need certain courses. Like for example, for business, we say, okay, we need English. Um, or if you are from Latin America, we look at your Spanish marks and we look at your mar maths marks um, because that's what your first language is. 
So we look at your marks in your first language. If you're applying for a post diploma professional certificate program, which we have seen, then we look at your bachelor's degree. We do not look at your high school. Marks. So it all depends on what program you're applying. The academic requirement is different. And if you don't meet our admission requirement, we have various ways. So for example, you apply to a nursing program um, and you do not, and you haven't studied biology ever. So we will give you a chance to write an online biology exam. It's a free exam. We'll give you first chance. If you don't pass that in first attempt, we'll give you a second chance to write that exam again for free. And you get two chance to write it. If you don't pass in both the chances, then you have two or more options. You can do that biology course online from your home country, or you can come in and do that biology course through the Northwest Bridging Program that I mentioned before. So these are the various ways you can still get into our programs, even if you don't meet our admission requirement. Okay, so again, uh, for the English language requirements, so again, you know, this is the way we have divided our programs into band, and I shown you before in the chart. So our business program, our professional certificate, healthcare aid, then most of our health programs, and also our community study program, environmental science, machine learning, all that falls in the band F. Then we have pharmacy technician under band G and nursing here. So again, if you look at this big chart, you will see the band E, which is a business and professional certificate meaning six with no better less than 5.5, 71, 2, 4, 105 bilingual. We also accept PT academic. So this is the other one for majority of our health and then community study program, we need 6.5 with no better less than six. This much total bilingual 105, this much PT academic. For pharmacy, we need 6.5 with no better less than six. We accept TOEFL, but we do not accept Duolingo and PT academic for pharmacy programs. Same thing for nursing. We need a very high IELTS in TOEFL, but we do not accept Duolingo and PT academic for our nursing program. Okay, and there are certain countries here. I'll quickly show you that these countries, if you have studied uh, in your grade 10, 11, and 12, uh, then you are exempt from the English language requirement. So you will see here some countries from Africa, like Kenya, Nigeria, Zimbabwe, Tanzania, Uganda. There are some Caribbean countries like Jamaica, Bermuda, Barbados. Um, there are, again, some other countries here like Cameroon. So Cameroon is a bilingual country, speaks English and French both. So we only give in English language paper for the British English system in English part. Then India is another country where we give them the English language papers for certificate and diploma. For Filipino students, we also give English language papers. But you'll not see any country in Eastern Europe. You'll not see any country in Latin America because English is not a first language in any of those countries. So of course, those students coming from those countries have to give either a Duolingo exam TOEFL exam or an IELTS exam, okay? And uh, the application, I'll not go too much into detail, but I'll only mention here is that, uh, you know, if you want to submit an application, you can connect with us and we can guide you. We do provide one-on-one, -on -one, uh, you know, uh, advising uh, on your application and we will get your, you know, information from Dot City, who is our host, who's helping us here. And then we will send you an email about how to apply. The only thing I'll mention it here is our application is submitted to Apply in Berta. That is like an online application system. Uh, we have an application fee of $155. Uh, we have, uh, you know, you have to send your documents via email initially, and you have to pay $1,000 to confirm your seat, and that's the only tuition deposit. And we will be needing your official documents. And that's the way you know the application process works. Um, and again, these are our application deadlines. They're probably two months before the start of the intake. But right now for Canada, there's so much rush, so many people applying. Uh, so it's taking three to four months to get a visa. So we usually recommend students to apply five to six months before the start of the intake. Uh, we do have few scholarships, not a lot of scholarship. So we have entrance scholarships. Um, and this scholarship is depending on your previous marks in your education. You just provide a letter. It's a competitive process. And then you could get a $1,000 scholarship here. 
We have ongoing scholarship every intake in fall and winter. You can also apply for some scholarships. If you are a good performing student, you have 85% or more marks. Yes, you could get scholarship. We, have, we even have awards if you have done any community work to support the local community in Edmonton. Yes, you could qualify for some awards also. So there's a there's lot. And again, apart from this scholarship, we have college-wide scholarships as well. So you can apply for that as well. So again, I'll go into my last part of the presentation. So again, I'll talk a little bit about travel. So right now, Canada is very, even Canada was open when we were at the peak of the, I would say, so right now, if you have to come to Canada, if you are 12 years or older, you have to be fully vaccinated. So if you're fully vaccinated, you can just come into Canada. You don't have to do any quarantine. There is no quarantine requirement. You don't have to do any COVID test when you arrive here or before you get on the plane. So there is no such kind of restrictions right now, which is a great thing. Um, again, if you're coming with your children, uh, and dependent children, because you can bring your dependent children with you. Uh, if they are 12 years or older, they need to be fully vaccinated. They are younger than 12 years, then even if they're not vaccinated, they can come with you. So there are those options. And, uh, you know, from April 1st, you know, nobody has to take any COVID test before they get on the plane to come to Canada. So that is a good update. And in our college right now, we are offering all our classes face to face. Um, so we are not offering online uh, because things are back to normal to a great extent here in Canada, in Alberta. So everything is open. There is no mask mandate and all that. So COVID is under control. Of course, COVID is not gone, but it's still under control. Um, so that's why we are offering that. This is my last slide. I'll just give you a little bit more information about immigration. So as you know, Canada you know, is one of the countries which is a very, very welcoming country. Um, it has a lot of great plans for immigration in the coming years. I think no country, as I mentioned before, like Australia, New Zealand, US, UK, or Germany, or any country in the world come close to Canada in terms of immigration. So that is one of our biggest strengths because Canada is looking to welcome more and more people. And Canada needs immigrants, as simple as that. So every year, Canada is bringing 1.4% of its population as new immigrants. So the next three-year plan of Canada is that it wants to bring 431,000 immigrants this year, 447,000 next year, and 450,000 the subsequent year. So there is a lot of new immigrants coming to, you know, plan to come to Canada. And I would say international students are the biggest beneficiary of that because Canada wants students to come here, study, work and settle in Canada. So that's pretty much the message that Canada wants to give to the student. You come and study, work here, and then you settle here. We don't want you to go back. And also, I think in, in Alberta, we have an Alberta Advantage Immigration Program, which is one of our immigration program here. And there are various streams, I'll not go into detail, but there are various streams through which you can get immigration. In Alberta, Opportunity Scheme, you just need six months experience here in Alberta. If you work for six months, yeah, you can apply for immigration. We even have point system immigration in Canada. And usually if you're in other parts of Canada, you need four to 500 points. But in Alberta, you can get immigration as low as 300 points. So even with lower points, you can get immigration. So things are more favorable, easier here in Alberta as other parts of Canada. And overall, Canada is way more better in immigration than any other part of the world. Um, so I think those are the other benefits if you want to come study, work, and settle in Canada. Um, you know, Edmonton and Alberta is a great destination. So last, this is our contact information. You can reach out to us at international.recruitment at northwest.ca. Our phone number is here, 780-644-618. Uh, but anyways, we'll get your contact information. And we will be sending you some emails to follow up. So expect an uh, email from us from uh, in your inbox. And then yeah, you can connect with us and we can guide you further. But yeah, we can definitely now go to the questions. I hope this was helpful uh, presentation and give you some information about Northwest Edmonton and the immigration streams we have here. Absolutely. Thank you so much. It was great. And actually, while you were presenting, you answered some of the questions that we received. So thank you so much for the presentation. But now really, we're ready to dive deep into all of your questions.
so Sarah, we have a question from Martina that is asking us if I am currently enrolled uh, in, uh, in my university and I have the opportunity to study remote. Can I move to Edmonton and study both? Of course, Edmonton will be on campus and the other university could be remote. I think your microphone is oh, perfect, sorry. thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, I think you can do it, but I don't know whether that, that is humanly possible to study two programs at the same time. But yes, if you are humanly uh, able to study two programs at the same time, yes, you can. Uh, because the program you will be studying in our institution, uh, yes, you have to be here in Edmonton, and you also have to be, uh, you know, studying that coming to the campus. But whereas, um, you know, the program you want to do both program at the same time, our program coming to our campus and studying your program from your home institution online, yeah, you can do that if you are able to balance it, but we do not recommend it because it will overwhelm you because you're doing two programs at the same time. It's better to consider it on one. On one, thank you so much. Uh, Gabriela is asking us, as a new and European citizen interested in moving to Canada, which sort of visa should I apply for in case so you're not you interested? Yeah, so I think there, there's only one requirement that is change, but you have to apply for study visa. So there are two kinds of countries the way Canada divides it is like one are the countries where they call the temporary resident visa is required, which means there is a sticker on your passport that they will be put. Now, a lot of European countries, um, like uh, in, I would say, mostly in the Western Europe uh, countries, those Western European countries, those are called visa exempt countries, um, which does not mean that you don't need visa to come. Uh, it means that, yes, you can come without a visa to Canada on a visitor visa, and you will need to apply for EPA, it's called electronic travel authorization. Uh, but when you're coming to come on a study visa, doesn't matter which country you're applying for, you still have to apply for a study visa. Uh, but if you don't want to come to study here, just want to come as a tourist, uh, the only advantage for European citizens are they just need to apply for EPA, get an approval, which they can get in one or two days, and they come and travel as a visitor. But when you're coming as a student, it's the same process, whether you are a European citizen or you are a student from Africa, Asia, Latin America, it's all similar. The same. And in terms of like English level certification, you mentioned that there are some certificates that you accept. It is required, I believe, so maybe we can just uh, spend a couple of words just to recap on this. Yeah, so if a student wants to show their English language capabilities, because that is required, because all the programs are in English, I'm just going in back to my slides. Um, so here you can see we accept IELTS, we accept TOEFL, we accept Duolingo, we accept PT Academic. A lot of times students like Duolingo because it's the most, I would say, cost effective, very convenient. You can do it from your home. Um, again, some students like IELTS better, some like TOEFL. Better. So it's all your preference, but you can demonstrate through this. But if you think you're not able to meet this admission requirement, this is pretty high for you. Um, then, as I mentioned before, you can do ESL programs or you can even get into the program through the bridging pathway. And again, this is the bridging pathway. Uh, if, if you get this scores that you see on this column on the right, uh, you can still get into the program through the bridging pathway and you will do some ESL courses and then you will jump into the program. So having that language um, is very, very important because everything here in Canada functions on English. And again, we speak you know, a lot of people say, what kind of English you speak? Well, we speak American English in Canada. So it's a very American accent, not a British accent. So it's a very Americanized English. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, before you mentioned, actually, in terms of application process, you said something like first come, if you're served. Uh, someone is asking us, um, this year I will graduate, and I'm interested in coming and studying in Canada. How early it is to put an application through or to start gathering some information? Do you have any advice? When is the right time to start looking for a program and putting an application through? 
Yeah, I would say, uh, you know, right time right now, I think is that the students should plan their study abroad journey one year in advance. If they really want to plan everything and they want things, um, you know, to come um, and it's it, they have enough time to plan their travel, they have enough time for your visa. So I would say they should plan one year in advance. Um, they should apply at least six months in advance before the start of the program for the visa process. So they have enough time. Now, certain countries in Africa, they're taking a lot of time, six to seven months to get a visa. There are certain countries you can get your visa in two to three months. So that's why we are saying as a rule of thumb that you plan your studies one year in advance, you apply one year in advance, and then you apply for your visa six to seven months in advance. So right now, is a very good time to apply for winter 2023. And for September intake, we are recommending students to only apply until the mid of May. So after 15th of May, you don't have enough time to get your visa for September intake. Um, but for winter intake, we have right now already applications open. You can apply for winter intake right now. This is a very good time to apply. Perfect, thank you. Um, so you actually showed us different sorts of programs. Martina is asking us if someone is interested in 2D a low area, is there any program that you could recommend? Yeah, so for law program, um, I would say um, in go back, uh, the program I would suggest is justice program. So this is uh, which comes closer to it. I'll not say that you'll become a lawyer after doing this program, no. Uh, but this is mainly for those students who want to study something in law. And we are mainly focusing on criminal law, criminal justice, or just criminal law. And we are also, um, I would say, focusing in this one is that um, investigation techniques, those kind of things that we focus. And we have some lawyers who are doing this program and they find this program useful. Um, so the closest that come to law is justice diploma. Perfect, thank you. Um, at the beginning of the webinar, you showed us a couple of very useful videos. Someone is asking us if you actually have a dormitory in campus or if it's easy to find accommodation in Alberta. So we do not have dormitory um, because our campus is located in downtown. Um, so again, in downtown, you know, space is an issue always. So, but uh, it's easier to find accommodation and we will guide you in the accommodation options when you are at that stage. And yes, it's easy to find accommodation and it's a very affordable accommodation as I mentioned before, the cost of living in Edmonton is very, very affordable. Perfect. Um, the ask team also asked if uh, a fresh graduate from pharma is possible to, you know, also thinking in the future to come to Norquist College, get a job and perhaps apply for a PhD program. Is this something that you guys offer? Is there a specific procedure for that? Yeah, so we do not offer PhD. So because we are a college, if you're looking for a PhD, you have to look for a university. And PhDs are long. Uh, they take anywhere from four to six years, uh, depending on how quickly you can do it. So you have to look for a university if you're looking for pharmacy PhD. Uh, in our case, we are mostly offering uh, you know, the pharmacy technician diploma. I'm not sure that you're interested in that, uh, but that is the program that we offer, which is a diploma program. And if you're looking for PSD, you have to look for it. Thank you. Uh, one specific question on the program, and of course, I just take the opportunity to remind everyone that we will be sending out an email. There will be a contact details that you can reach out in case you have more specific questions. They're asking us about the machine learning analyst program. So they say that during the presentation, you mentioned something about moving to a degree. How does it work? Yeah, so some of our programs have that option for students to you know, take their diploma to a degree. So yeah, that does work. Um, again, we are right now in partnership, we are talking to a university. So when you complete a two-year diploma, then there are options to go into a second year or a third year of a bachelor's degree, and then you can continue. A lot of students usually do it afterwards. So, you know, the way international students do, they come and study two-year diploma, they get a three-year work permit, and once they get their work permit, then they apply for permanent residency. Once they get the permanent residency, 
then they go for a degree because then your uh, tuition fee is very less. As a Canadian citizen, your tuition fee is way less than as an international student. Um, so, but that option is there. We have a lot of programs like social work, um, uh, machine learning, child and youth care, and others where there are what we call is laddering opportunities to award a degree, which means you can transfer from a diploma to a degree. So that is a possibility. And this is through Alberta Transfer Guide. So Alberta Transfer Guide is a, is a system through which students in from diploma can transfer to a degree. Perfect. Another question, which I think is actually leads us to a question that I wanted to ask you, is: um, Is there any sort of interview to pass in order to be admitted? And what's your advice on students that are interested in putting an application through? Anything that you feel like is important to keep in mind? Yeah, we do not have any interviews. So the way our admission work is the you have to meet the English language requirement and you have to meet the academic requirement. If you meet those two requirements, yes, you are in the program. You do not have to give any interview. Um, again, even in our visa process, when we're applying for a study visa, there is no interview. Uh, it's not like US, you have to go into an interview. It's all paper-based. You have to submit your documents, and based on your documents, they will decide whether you can get a visa or not. So yes, interview is not a, process, um, a part of the admission or the visa process. Uh, do, doing the test is also not, uh, you don't have to give any test. Only time you have to give a test if you don't meet our admission requirement. So if you didn't study biology or math, then we say, okay, do you want to meet that admission requirement through a test? Then it, then only the test comes into the picture. So that's the way, you know, the admission and the visa process works. Perfect. So coming towards the end of our webinar together, I wanted, of course, to thank you, Sarah, for your time and all of you for staying connected and for all of your questions. I wanted to ask if there was anything else that you wanted to add. Of course, we will follow up with an email. Uh, just check your inbox because you probably receive an email over the next few days. So you can actually uh, follow up uh, with your more specific questions. I wanted to ask if there was anything else that you wanted to add before closing the session today. Yeah, I think the few things I'll probably definitely, I'm just jumping in the slides as I'm talking. I just wanted to make sure, first of all, that you apply early. Um, because it's very, very important that students apply early. I think somebody asked that question, when should I apply? You should start applying as soon as possible. Probably I would say 11 uh, to 12 months before the start of the program. Late to late, you should apply five to six months before. So that's one thing I will mention. The other thing is, you know, whenever you're choosing a program, reach out to us, uh, reach out to your institution. So connect with us through international recruitment and northwest.ca. We can talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. We can set your right expectation because we don't want students come with the wrong expectation. Oh, I thought this will, I'll be teaching. I'll be taught this in the program, but the program is teaching me different. It's not up to my expectation. So we do not want you to come here with the wrong expectation. So to have the right expectation, it's always advisable to connect with the program. We can even connect you with the program chair who, who have uh, created that program. So you can talk to the program chair directly and they can set the right expectation with you. So we want to make sure you come with right expectation. And I think the last thing I would say, yeah, you know, Edmonton, Canada is a very, very friendly and a great place to come and study. So again, if you're choosing Canada, if you're choosing in Edmonton, it's a great choice uh, because we have so many international students. We have over 2,000 students studying with us from different parts of the world and they're all enjoying. And you can even connect with our, our students also, current students. You can talk to them. You can ask us, can I talk to one of your current students? Yeah, you can. And they can share their experience with you. And you will know firsthand, you know, what is the student life is at Northwest. So that is also something that you should explore. Perfect. So thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Thank you all for staying connected. Check your inbox because we will be following up with some extra information. And we look forward to seeing you soon at Northwest. So you have all the contact details there. Take a screenshot of the slide. We will also send you an email, so don't worry. And thank you so much. Thank you, Sarah, for your time. And thank you all for being connected. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.